You see this thing? You're probably doing it wrong. What? Get up and get down, get up and get down. The Roman chair. Most people are doing this wrong and it all stems from where the pad is being placed. Come over to the side right here and you can see how much movement is occurring out of his low back. Our goal is to lock the lumbar spine in place and move about the hips keep this from moving. So all you're gonna do is make sure that the pad is set up to where the pad is gonna be lower than the top of his pelvis. So you can see in this position right here, his pelvis starts there and the pad is below it. There's his start. He's only going to lower into the point at which this stays stable. Any lower, about right there, that's his end point, and then he's gonna come back up. This means that the muscles of the back, his erector muscles, are working isometrically to stiffen the core, stabilize the spine, and the prime movers are going to be the hip extensors, your glutes and hamstrings. The second you go too far and let that back around, now we're getting a lot of movement of the spine under load, and that is a problem. I don't want you to fear back flexion. But understand that when we flex the back under load, over time it just creates a situation that can increase risk of injury. So for most people, the best practice is to save your back flexion for low load situations. And when you're using this under load, you're gonna make sure that your back only goes to the position it can while maintaining a flat position and move about your hips. So when you're in the bottom position, you're gonna feel your glutes, you're gonna feel stretch in your hamstrings, and that is how you perform the hip extension machine on the Roman chair. Now, a good piece of advice is how to get set up. I'm gonna let Graham explain what he likes to do with the feet. One of the things you wanna think about is the feet and the glutes are engaged. They work together, right? You would never be using your glutes if your feet weren't part of the equation. So when you're here, a lot of times people will try to create extra tension by pulling their toes off the back. So they'll kind of get here and they lift their toes up or their feet will rotate and turn out because they're trying to get those glutes to engage. I like the cue and think about making sure the feet point straight down and then grabbing with the toes. So if you only have a back, you can grab the flat part. But if you have one of these with a bend, I like to grab the bottom with my toes. Helps me to grip a little bit more so that when I lower down, I can push through those toes, squeeze the glutes as they come back up. Remember, we're hinging at the hip. So we want to extend, squeeze the glutes, and use the entire foot, ankle, lower leg, knee, and hip complex together as one unit. This is a hip extension exercise. When under load, we want to train hip hinging mechanics and moving about the hips. This is how we become better athletes. This is how we transfer this over to better squats, deadlifts, cleans, running and jumping. We don't want to see that back round under load. So let's train that hip hinge, how to move about the hips. All you do, set the pad in the right position underneath your pelvis. If it's too high, it's really easy to let that back round and you're not getting the needed hip extension. Hope this was able to clarify some points. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section below this video. Be sure to go and head on over to Graham's YouTube channel at The Barefoot Sprinter and give him a subscribe because he's got a lot of great information there and a lot of good information from us is coming soon in future videos. So until then guys, happy Roman chair hip extensioning. They say that. Energy flows where attention goes, so I pay no mind. Why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching? So caught up in their egos, these people have lost.